Welcome to JMI. But before we get back there and go through the manufacturing and the assembly areas, I'd like to take a few minutes and explain a little bit about our company and the history of JMI. So uh, we have a little understanding of where we came from and, and how we came into being. mission as a company is to manufacture, assemble and test high quality products of maximum value to support our customers. JMI does not sell to the end users. Our role is strictly to make sure that we're um, manufacturing high quality equipment and supply that to the service companies out there who have the additional support required for the installations and for the uh, applications in the field. So we currently have 13 CNC machines that we're operating on a daily basis and running in manufacturing parts. The way that JMI begins an order is that we receive a drawing from engineering. All the products that we manufacture at JMI are engineered products. So everything that we have at JMI, it actually uh, will come from our engineering department. The drawings are released from engineering to manufacturing. When those drawings are released to manufacturing, we will then assign raw materials to those uh, work orders, create the work orders and assign raw material to them. Every piece of raw material that we receive at JMI has a material identification uh, number, heat number from the mill. We take that mill heat cert number, we issue what we call a J number on it, and you'll hear me talk about that a couple more times throughout this tour. That J number is our batch number or heat number for the raw materials. That material will then be distributed out to the jobs, signed to the jobs, the work orders are cut and released to manufacturing. This is an example of the raw materials after they've been cut up, the job lot has been tagged, and they're ready for the next step in the, in the process. Once the material has been cut up, like we said, the, it's assigned to a machine and the jobs are distributed out on the floor. They go out to the, out to the floor for manufacturing until finished processing. So in 2011, JMI expanded our facilities. When, they expanded, when we expanded the facilities, we added additional floor space and roof line to better accommodate our business. Well, from the time that JMI started until our current JMI, um, our business has changed over the years. Just, you know, events have changed. We've actually adapted and adjusted our facilities to match the current demand. And when we added onto the facility, we also added in additional capacity and more floor space, but also to better add better services to our customers. Third party inspections have become uh, more common than they were obviously 20 years ago. And so we added the facilities in our building for that third party, to host those third party inspections here. In addition to the gas lift equipment that we manufacture, we also manufacture um, chemical injection equipment. And we do industry standard chemical injection equipment as well as custom equipment for our customers as well. So in the custom equipment, um, we have, it's usually made to order equipment. That equipment is typically assembled and tested in this room right here. We have the capability now at JMI uh, where we routinely test up to 15,000 pounds. Our quality department is fully staffed. We have a great quality management system in place at JMI to make sure that we maintain uh, the requirements or we fulfill the requirements to our customers and that they're taken care of in accordance with those additional standards that they are applying. We have uh, additional equipment uh, just this year. We've added on um, additional equipment and capacities for efficiencies. And, and new technology.
so after they after the parts are released from final inspection, some of those parts will make their way back to the bellows welding room to complete the sub-assemblies by attaching the bellows to them. We're going to go take a look at that right now. After the parts are released from manufacturing, after the final inspection, uh, the parts for the sub-assemblies, for the bellows sub-assembly, are brought back uh, to the bellows welding room and then where they're going to continue for further processing to complete the sub-assemblies. So the bellows is a very important part of the valve. Obviously, it's the heart of the valve. It's always been identified as. So the bellows is made up of three plies of material. So this thing is manufactured with three 0.005 five thousandths tubes that are inserted inside of each other to form three plies. Those plies are then formed into the convolutions that, as you see on this bellows. So the bellows is designed so that it functions as a spring, but it also, also holds pressure. So it becomes, uh, it creates the pressure chamber that becomes the closing force for the valve. So you have your casing pressure, your tubing pressure, then your closing force is the nitrogen charge that's being isolated inside of this bellows assembly. So this bellows assembly with these th three thin plies, we're asking a lot of it. We're asking it to operate at about 4,000 pounds differential across this bellows. The manufacturers state that this bellows is really rated for about 800 pounds. But the magic in this bellows functioning like it's supposed to with the high differentials across it is the way that it's assembled and the way that it's tested. So we put a lot of time and effort and we exceed what API requires when we're putting these bellows assemblies together. Uh, this is a standard, industry standard type bellows assembly that we're gonna look at. This bellows is an inch and a half. This bellows is a one inch, very small. Substantially difference in the size. Still manufactured the same way. Both of them are three plies, and both of them are attached the same way. The inch and a half bellows, this is what it looks like in a sub-assembly once it's all put together. You have your dome, your bellows adapter, and the bellows itself. And it's been brazed on this joint right here on either end of it. it comes a ceiling, makes it sealed off. So your nitrogen charge ultimately will be in here. Your ball stem will be screwed into here, which goes down to your seat. Your casing pressure is going to work on the effective area of the outside of this bellows in order to give it to open the valve. That's going to open the valve. When the valve, when the pressure drops below the nitrogen charge, the valve will close. Your closing force will close the valve. So Altec has their own proprietary design on gas lift bellows attachment. They use an inverted method. So right now the bellows on, on there, the Casing pressure is functioning and working on the outside of this bellows area. On Altex valve, the bellows or the casing pressure is working on the internal convolutions of the bellows for your, to open the valve. The difference is when the casing pressure is applied to the outside of an industry standard valve, the bellows compresses to move the ball stem off of the seat. On the case of the Altec valve, it's inverted. So the pressure is working on the inside of the bellows. It will extend the bellows in order to open the valve, to pull that ball stem off of the seat and extend. Altec's proprietary design on their constant flow valve has a real hydraulic protection in it. So there's a fluid that's installed inside of this bellows assembly along with the nitrogen charge. When that valve opens up on the Altec design, when the valve casing pressure works on the effective uh, inside of the bellows, removes that ball stem off the seat, the bellows will then hit a hydraulic seal. When it gets hydraulic, when it hits a hydraulic seal, you lock that fluid around the bellows. You can't compress the liquid, so therefore you can't distort the bellows. And it's just a superior design. Our life cycle testing easily demonstrates that that's a better design for the longevity of the valve for life cycle. So bellows are just like a spring. So the bellows are gonna function best and get the most life out of them if they work within their free length. So that's what our valves are designed to do from an engineering perspective. So that they're set up so that we're gonna get the optimum life out of it. And we check that by validation testing. Soldering is performed at around 400 degrees. Brazing is typically performed around 1200 degrees. So when you're gonna be looking at the welding process, when they're attaching this bellows on to the manufactured dome, 
what you're going to see is it's going to turn red and that braze wire or the braze becomes liquid. It's 1200 degrees at that point. It's a special application. We talked about the thin plies of the bellows. So what we have to make sure we're doing is we're applying the heat into the mass of the part and not into the thin plies. Or you can have a heat affected zone in the first two or three convolutions if you aren't careful and that can lead to premature failure of the bellows because you have work hardened when we're attaching the bellows on there and that we apply the heat into the mass of the part and not into the bellows. You could create a heat affected zone in those first two or three convolutions that would basically change the mechanical properties of it and could lead to premature uh, failure of the bellows. This unit is used to conduct our validation testing on our bellows life cycle testing. One of the requirements of API is that you have to have bellows that are fully function tested in order to get to the V1 validation grade level. So we have that capability in-house to be able to perform that testing. API requires that seven valves are tested and you have to, certain test parameters you have to be able to maintain during the process. So this, actually this machine inside allows us to do that. So we can see we have seven stations that will be set up and running to, to perform this test. Very important test to get the life cycle um, validation requirements met or not met. You're trying to establish a baseline for your product, what you're doing. So we can test seven at a time simultaneously. This is a where the valves are installed back here in the back of the machine. It will be set up and it's taking the readings from it. It's all fully automated. So after the valves have been assembled, so the bellow sub-assemblies have been put together, they're coupled with the other pieces and parts to form a full assembly. After the full assemblies are done, they're serialized and they're brought down here for further testing. As part of the bellows integrity test, um, it requires in accordance with API, we have to put the valves in this hydrostatic chamber and we have to pressure test them. So these valves, what's gonna happen is we'll put about a thousand pounds of nitrogen charge inside the dome or the bellows assembly of the valve and then we're gonna put them in this tank right here, in these tanks in big batches, and we're gonna pressure up on them. So we're gonna apply simulated casing pressure to the external of the bellows. So the API specification calls for the hydrostatic test to be as follows. You put the valves in the aging chamber, you pressure it up to 5,000 pounds, you hold it for 15 minutes, release the pressure, pressure back up to 5,000 pounds, hold it for 15 more minutes, release the pressure, apply pressure once again to 5,000 pounds, hold it for two hours, and then release the pressure. That's a complete hydrostatic aging test in accordance with API 19G2 specifications. What JMI does is a little bit different. We exceed what API requires, and this is based on our learning over the years and understanding and experience. It's not cost efficient, it's not uh, cost effective. However, we think it is the right thing to do for the product to perform a real bellows integrity test, and so this is how we do it. We'll put the valves in the aging chamber. We'll uh, fill it up with water, purge the air out the tanks, just like we normally do. We apply pressure to 5,000 pounds. Put 5,000 pounds on it. We'll hold them for 12 hours or for overnight. We'll bleed that pressure off. We'll take them out of the tank, bring them up, bring them to the valve shop, cool them down to 60 degrees, 
run them through the test rack, and record the opening pressure by serial number in a log book. Well, after we run all the valves through the test rack, we'll then take them back to the tank, insert them into the tank, purge the air out, pump them up to 5,000 pounds, hold them for two hours, bleed it off, take them out the tank, repeat the process by serial number, record the pressure, bring them back, put them in the tank, and we repeat that process four total times. So a bellows has what's called hysteresis. And so it functions softer and better and will be able to maintain its ability to open and close at the desired setting pressure better uh, as you age it, if you age it properly. So this is called a bellows stabilization test. That's why we do this extended process. We, we perform this process so the valves will be able to function better when they get to the Altec or to the service company. I mean, the valves have been aged and now they're ready for the final processing. But what I did want to show you was the results of that testing. We talked about how the valves go into the tank and then we, we remove them from the tank, cool them off, run them through the test rack, record the pressure back and forth at least four times as part of the JMI standard process, which far exceeds what API requires. This is the results of that testing. So by serial number, we actually document by serial number the findings of those each pressure recording. API states that the valves have to measure within five PSI from the previous test. One of the things with the API test that we think is uh, not taken into consideration is that whenever a valve is put in an hydrostatic aging chamber, if you introduce it to pressure, release the pressure, introduce the pressure, release the pressure, do that three times, you don't know what happened between each time that valve was introduced to pressure. So what we're trying to find out if there's a change in the pressure between each cycle. This is why we've added the additional steps. So what those additional steps will tell us is a change in the test rack opening pressure, which is why we record those pressures. So earlier in the conversation, we talked about the three plies of bellows. It is possible that you could have one bellows fail inside the valve, but the valve still is able to maintain some pressure. What you've done though, is you've effectively changed the area inside that bellows assembly. When you change the area in it, albeit small, it might change the opening pressure or it will change the opening pressure. So we're looking for that change in between aging cycles to determine if something is happening with that bellows assembly as part of the standard factory acceptance test. So if these valves run through four agings for us, the way that we perform that factory acceptance test and they don't change more than five pounds through each aging cycle. An aging cycle is defined as pressure up, pressure released and retested. Then that valve will pass and it'll be go, uh, it will be accepted as good for further processing. Every valve that JMI manufactures is held to a five day shelf test. That five day shelf test is API standard. So one thing that's important to remember is a quality measure for JMI. It makes no difference to us if the valve is gonna be a monogram product or not. Everything is tested in accordance with API specifications. So we adhere to those standards, including the five-day shelf test. What the five-day shelf test does, it will tell you if there's an issue, like a slow leak in a valve, and it's possible. So that quite simply is exactly what it says after the valves are completed through the standard factory acceptance testing, you let them lie for five days, you cool them off, run them through the test rack one more time, a minimum of five days later, and you will check that opening pressure again. We actually record that opening pressure one more time after the five day shelf test and make sure that it's within the five pounds that it was previously uh, when it was laid down for the five day shelf test. Part of the testing process on our recondition or on every new valve that we manufacture, we perform a mechanical stem travel check. 
And that's simply what it is. It's a, it's a test that's used to um, measure the distance that the ball travels from the seat when pressure is applied to that bellows assembly. So interestingly enough, if a valve doesn't have enough travel in it, you can't move that ball far enough from the seat in order to get the right amount of gas passage or the equivalent gas passage for the port size. So when we do this mechanical stem travel check on reconditioned valves, we sometimes find valves that didn't have enough travel in them. As the manufacturer of this product line, it is on JMI to ensure that that travel is built inherently into the device. All of our valves are engineered designs. So, and that means that we have the ability in engineering to take the piece parts, put them into an assembly, and show the movement of the valve theoretically or virtually in the SOLIDWORKS uh, or some engineering design software and do a tolerance accumulation study as well. And we manufacture all our parts in accordance with those tolerances. However, we're only making an assumption if we don't do a, a physical stem travel check on each valve. So we check every valve. We don't want to assume that the travel is built into it. We make sure that the travel is built in there by performing this test. We find valves that come back from reconditioning, for reconditioning, and they had no travel, didn't have enough travel in them. So did your well work or not work because, uh, because of the gas that designed, because of the data that was given to Altec, or was it because simply the valve just didn't have enough travel to get the equivalent gas passage through the orifice? Uh, we're now in our finished assembly area. The JMI manufactures probably 30 different types of gas lift valves, bellows operated valves in both one inch and inch and a half, tubing retrievable and wireline retrievable models. So uh, in this room is where the assemblies are put together, sub assemblies are pulled into this room, the piece parts are pulled from our inventory and the valves are assembled. So uh, we have our finished parts room, where the parts are stored, we maintain traceability on everything that we do. On every part, we maintain traceability on every part that we manufacture. So early in the conversation, I mentioned that we had the uh, J number. We talked about the heat number of the raw material when it came in the door. If I take a look at one of the manufactured piece parts, we'll see that J number is permanently stamped on this product. That's how we perform a PMI for each order when it comes time for assembly. We make sure PMI stands for positive material identification. So the geometry looks exactly the same, but it's imperative that we make sure that we're pulling the correct material for the correct jobs. Therefore, the PMI. So this is the finished parts room. See a variety of different types of parts. There aren't a, a, there's not a lot of equipment up here on the shelf, but these are examples of the products that we do manufacture. One and a half inch latch, two different models. One of them is a ring style latch with a spring. This is the cam style. Our JMI is a full product line manufacturer. So there are many tools that we do offer within the gas their products. As an example, this is an industry, industry standard, one and one half inch injection pressure operated gas lift valve. That bellows assembly that we showed uh, being put together in the brazing room is right here in this valve. So you have your nitrogen chamber, nitrogen charge inside of this pressure chamber. The casing pressure would be applied in through these portholes, working on the effective area of the bellows to overcome your dome charge, open the valve, gas would exhaust through the nose of the valve into the tubing. These two sections right here are your upper and lower packing glands. This will isolate it inside the gas lift mandrel. The mission of JMI is to make sure that the valves from the mechanical perspective, from the manufacturing perspective, meet form, fit, and function. That's what we're charged with, that's what we do every day at this facility, and that's our specialty and our focus. Thank you for your time. We appreciate the opportunity to show you our facility, and we hope you end up with some JMI valves in your well.